Here we are with part two of our introduction to race and we're going to now move on to race as a social construction. We just talked about the difference between race and ethnicity. Now we're going to talk about race as a social construction and that ties to our definition because again remember there's this idea that race is somehow quote biological but of course what race is, how we think about it is actually more of a cultural construct. Um, so we're going to start um, with a short little video here to kind of lay out this idea of race as a social construction. So let's see here. Social and political outcomes, race isn't real. One of the first people to attempt to categorize humans according to race was a German scientist around 1776. He came up with five different groups according to physical appearance and geographic origin of their ancestors. Americans of European descent eagerly bought into this type of thinking around the same time. Some historians have said the idea that there were different races helped them resolve the contradiction between a natural right to freedom and the fact of slavery. If whites were their own distinct category, then they could feel a lot better about denying freedom to people who they labeled black and decided were fundamentally different. But as political priorities change, definitions of race in America adjust right along with them. For example, if you were of Mexican birth or ancestry in the United States in 1929, you were considered white. Then, the 1930 census changed that to non-white to limit immigration. Later, when the U.S. needed to increase its labor force during World War II, these people were switched back to white. And what it took to be black once varied so wildly throughout the country, from one quarter to one sixteenth to the infamous one drop of African ancestry, that people could actually change races just by crossing state lines. Then, suddenly, in 2000, the government decided that Americans could be more than one race and added a multiracial category to the census. This has left many Americans scratching their heads when it comes to selecting who they are. As many as 6.2% of census respondents selected some other race in a 2010 survey. The idea that someone might look one way and identify another way, or that they might be really hard to place in a racial category, is not new. This is why there was a public debate about whether MSNBC's Karen Finney could say she was black, or how we can't even agree on the racial label assigned to the President of the United States. Of course, many people feel their racial identity is very clear and very permanent, but the fact that some people have changed theirs and that no one can really argue with them shows how shaky the very idea of race is. This is all because there isn't a race chromosome in our DNA that people can point to. It simply doesn't exist. When the medical community links race to health outcomes, it's really just using race as a substitute for other factors, such as where your ancestors came from, or the experiences of people who may have been put in the same racial group as you. Dorothy Roberts explains that sickle cell anemia is a prime example of this. The disease is linked to areas with high rates of malaria, which includes some parts of Europe and Asia in addition to Africa. It's not actually about race at all. This, of course, does not mean that the concept of race isn't hugely important in our lives. The racial categories to which we're assigned can determine real-life experiences, they can drive political outcomes, and they can even make the difference between life and death. But understanding that racial categories are made up can give us an important perspective on where racism came from in the first place. Okay, right? So kind of interesting when we think about race, again, not tied to biology, but rather very much tied to culture, society, economics. Right? Race is not rooted in biology, rather it's bound to specific historical whoops, and social context, a social construction. And what's really interesting, your textbook talks about this, race as a concept is relatively new. Right, This whole idea of race didn't really exist before the 16th century and only really came into being in, in the 19th century. Now of course this doesn't mean that people weren't stratified and, and, and organized into groups before race became about. But what's interesting, early divisions were based not on race but between those who were considered civilized versus uncivilized. Right, So if you look at this map over here, the first British Empire, this is from 1763, you had it divided into the quote civilized areas versus is the uncivilized areas, right? It had nothing to do with, with race. So as, as that video talked about, racial categories are place specific and racial categories are time specific. So for example, in South Africa, you have three racial categories, white, black, and pretty much everyone else fell into or falls into what they called quote colored. Versus in Brazil, you have five racial categories, white, brown, black, Asian, Asian, indigenous. So again, place specific, 
Um, and then, of course, time specific. So if we look down here, this is a, a sort of timeline of the different racial categories on the U.S. Census, and very similar to that video we talked about, right? Way back in the 1800s, you basically had two categories, and then we added three, right? And then, you know, five and six and so on and so forth. So when we say racist is social construction, I, I, the point is that it, it because we see differences in places, we see differences over time, obviously biology doesn't, um, isn't a very good explanation for that. So who cares? Why does recognizing race as a social construction matter? Well, your textbook make, made a really interesting point. When categories like race become naturalized, aka rooted in biology, alternative ways of viewing the world appear more and more impossible. So for example, why in the US do we ha only have five whoops, main racial groups and not 95? Why do we focus on skin color? Why don't we focus on foot size or ear shape or height? Um, and why is our racial categories based on what we look like? Why don't we base them on regions, right? East, west, south, north. And while these questions probably seem kind of silly, um, when you really think about it, how we've done race is just as silly, right? That we picked skin color and how arbitrary that is. So with that, you know, again, why does recognizing race as a social construction matter? Um, because while it's made up, there's very real consequences to it, right? Race as we know it has no deterministic biological basis. All the same, race is so powerful that it can have life or death consequences. And we're seeing this in the Black Lives Matter movement, right? A lot of... Um, discussions about police brutality against black men. So they, well, again, this is a made-up concept. There are very real consequences. Um, so, and of course, the most obvious consequence of race is racism. So here's a definition. We'll talk about this more next week. But racism, the belief that all members of each race possess characteristics or abilities specific to that race, right, that there's a biological sort of basis for why this group acts that way, why that group acts that way, in a different way, especially so as to distinguish it as inferior or superior to another race or races. Right, so this idea that there's inherent sort of superiority, inferiority based on racial groups. What does racism look like? Um, racism, of course, can be very violent, um, liter physically, emotionally, um, in terms of actual violence um, and, and brutality, racial slurs. But I would argue that racism tends to come more commonly in much quieter, everyday, ordinary forms. And I mention that because when we think about, you know, a racist person or what a racist person looks like, we tend to have this very stereotypical image in our head. And I would argue that all of us um, hold race, um, racist views to some extent in some way, often unconscious. So what I'd like everybody to do is you're going to take the implicit association test on race. I've included this link in check-in number six, but I wanted to show you what it looks like. So the link's going to take you here, right, the implicit association test. You're going to click, click continue, and you're going to want to take the race test. And it's going to ask you some general questions, and again, you want to be as honest as possible. You'll fill out these questions. You'll put in your demographic data, and then you click Take Race Test. And it's going to ask you to um, look at some pictures and quickly respond um, with a, a yes or a no. So go ahead, take this test, and you're going to want to record your results because you're going to need to put your results in check-in number six in the little quiz. So go ahead and take this, and it's going to be interesting. Be honest, um, and we'll talk about this and process this idea that racism, we all have some pre um, version of racist, you know, prejudice, discrimination, but oftentimes it goes unnoticed. Okay, so that's it for the videos. So make sure you've watched both of these videos. Take that implicit association test, and then take check-in number six on Canvas, and we'll see you after spring break.